All right, let's talk about the technique known as double tapping. So double tapping is literally whenever you press a button twice. It's double tapping. Now, why would you want to double tap? Well, the main use for double tapping is during link combos, like this one. You can link these two moves together. However, if you're too early, the move doesn't come out, and if you're too late, they can block it. So double tapping gives you two chances to hit that window where the combo is possible. Or in other words, if your first button press is too early, then maybe your second button press will be right on time. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, why wouldn't I just mash to get it to come out? And for easier links, that is probably possible, like this one. And in fact, the hardest link in Street Fighter 6 is a five frame window. So that's pretty easy to get just by mashing. However, in most other fighting games, it's gonna be a lot harder. And we can actually visualize this in Street Fighter 6 by looking at the numbers on the left side of the screen. If I mash, we're getting a lot of twos, threes, and fours in there, which means that there's going to be a large gap in between my button presses. However, if I'm more careful and I use different fingers to press the buttons, I can limit it down to ones and twos exclusively. And specifically, how long you hold the second button press doesn't matter. What matters is how long you hold the first button and how long is in between the two button presses. So for example, with this double tap right here, I pressed and held the first button for two frames, and then I was not holding a button for one frame, and then I pressed the button again. The perfect double tap looks like this, where you go from not pressing the button on one frame, then on the next frame you do press the button, then on the next frame you don't press the button, and then on the next frame you do press the button. So in the span of only three frames, you press a button twice. That is the perfect double tap. Now, how do you do this? Well, it's pretty simple. You just pick two fingers to press a button with, and then you make sure to release the button as fast as possible after pressing it once, and then pressing it with the next finger. And for most people, the easiest way to do this is with your middle finger, followed by your index finger. And it makes a nice, satisfying noise on your controller when you do it. But be sure to go into a game with a input display like this that, that shows the exact number of frames that you hold something down and practice doing perfect double taps. Now, because humans are not perfect, there's no way to get this down to 100% consistency. Like there, I missed the frame. There, I missed the frame. That was perfect. I missed one frame. Perfect, perfect. Missed one frame, perfect, perfect. So about half the time I get it perfect and about half the time I miss one frame. Now what you could do is you could practice more advanced techniques by adding more fingers. So instead of middle index, you can add ring middle index and that'll give you a triple tap like that. Or you can do a quadra tap by adding your pinky first. So pinky, ring, middle, index. And then the ultimate would be the five tap of adding your thumb at the end. But I, 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 I can't do that. Although for most games, you'll be fine just doing double taps. Now there are times when you might consider not double tapping because, well, if you double tap, you're committing two fingers to one button. And especially in games like Street Fighter where you have six different buttons you need to press, or even an extra button for a macro, you might you might think twice before committing two fingers to one button. So especially in this game, where the links are so easy, you probably don't need double taps. You can consider not double tapping. And there are also situations where double tapping does not help you at all. One of those examples is in one frame links. And to explain this, I need to start drawing things on the screen. So let's pretend that each one of these boxes is a frame. So the game runs at 60 frames per second, and a certain number of these frames are within the window of time where a link is possible. So let's just start with the example where 
a three frame window is possible. So let's say you're playing a game with no buffer and you're doing a move that's plus 10 into a move with eight frame startup. That would be a three frame link. You have a three frame window where you can press the button and the link combo will work. If you're too early, then your move won't come out. And if you're too late, then the move will come out too late and the opponent can block it. A perfect double tap is hitting a button on one frame and then releasing it on the next frame and then pressing it on the next frame. If you somehow, which is this is very hard to actually do, but if you somehow press a button, then release it and press it again on the next frame, the way fighting games are coded is that it will consider the button as just being held down for two frames. It doesn't actually consider it as being pressed twice on two consecutive frames. So the perfect double tap, let's say you press the button on this frame, and then you press the button again on this frame, well, that would work because your first one was a frame too early, but your second one is in the window of time where the link is possible. But now let's go back and let's assume that it's a one frame link. So you have to hit this one frame. Well, the problem with this is that if you're a frame early, well, now your second button press is a frame late. So even if you double tap a one frame link, if you're one frame off, it still fails. Now, theoretically, if you were two frames early, then the double tap does help you because your second button press will be on time. So the only reason to double tap a one frame link is if you plan to be two frames early exactly and not one frame early or on time. So it's like, at best, you have a 50% chance of hitting that link. You're much better off just learning the timing for the one frame link and pressing the button once on that frame as close as you possibly can and hoping it works. Now let's go back to our three frame link example because there's something weird that happens as the link window gets wider and wider. So if you do a perfect double tap on a three frame window, your first button press can be here, two frames early because then you hit it on this frame, or it can be on this frame or this frame all the way up into the last frame, right? So suddenly, if you do a perfect double tap, the link goes from three frames to five frames. Now here's the thing. What if you don't do a perfect double tap? What if you waste a frame? So, you, so your first button press is way over here, and then your second button press is over here. So there's a two frame gap in between the two button presses instead of a one frame gap. Well, suddenly the link becomes even easier because now you're allowed to be way over here with your first button press, or you can be way over here with your first button press. So it's actually a six frame window, not a five frame window. And that's kind of weird because you're doing the double tap slower and it's giving you a bigger window to work with. Now here's the problem with that is if it's a two frame window to hit the link, well now if you're one frame early, and you waste a frame on your double tap, well now it's the same situation as the one frame link where your first button press is before the window and your second button press is after the window. So what this means is the gap in between your two button presses should be equal to the length of the link window minus one. So if you have a two frame window, you should attempt to do a perfect double tap with one frame in between the two button presses or if it's a if it's a five frame window you should try to space out your double tap so that there's four frames in between the two button presses now of course if you're dealing with a four frame window uh you're probably fine just doing a perfect double tap and doing it that way because the link is so easy but theoretically if you're really bad at timing and you really want to maximize the window to where you can do a link, then you can space out your double taps accordingly. Now, there are other times when double tapping does not help you. One of those times is if you have to delay the move because the thing that makes double tapping work is if you press the button too early, your move doesn't come out. So in this example, again, if I'm too early, Ryu does the first one and then doesn't do the second one. However, there are cases 
where that's not going to work. For example, if I'm too early on this combo, my super whips, but I can delay the Shoryuken slightly, and now it actually works. So normally I can double tap this Shoryuken to make sure it comes out on time, but because I have to delay the Shoryuken for the super to connect properly, I can't double tap it. So in these cases, double tapping is completely useless. Another example where you can't double tap is if you have to hold the button down. So for example, this is a combo with Marissa, where I do a normal and I cancel the normal into the button hold version of the Gladius. And this makes sense because I'm pressing a button and then immediately releasing it. So it's not possible to get the charged version of the move, which requires you to not release the button. So in these cases, double tapping is useless. You need to time the button press properly and hold it down from the first button press. And that's just about everything when it comes to double tapping. Um, overall, I still double tap in Street Fighter VI because I learned how to double tap from KOF, but double tapping is definitely not necessary and it gives you only like a marginal advantage in certain cases. It is far more useful in other game franchises that don't have a five frame input buffer. But anyway, I hope you learned something. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube for more videos like this. And if you want to support me in some way, there are several options. You can become a patron on Patreon, you can become a member on YouTube, or you can subscribe on Twitch. I am now officially affiliated with Twitch. And if you do subscribe on Twitch, you get several great emotes. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.